Enemy is a 2013 film directed by Denis Villeneuve. Interestingly, it was released in the same year as another film called The Double. Both films revolve around a soft-spoken man who seemingly, randomly, runs into someone who looks exactly like him, his doppelganger. Both films were based on novels called The Double, but they're two different novels. I was quite surprised to learn this. Like, I wonder if the films intentionally came out at the same time so they could be doubles of each other. Unlike The Double, which seems to invite countless endless interpretations, I think the puzzle of Enemy is intended to be solved in one particular way. There's even a quote at the beginning of the film that says, Chaos is order yet undeciphered, so it's basically telling you that there is a key to the film. The film even presents you with a key, which Anthony, and later Adam, uses to access the sex club. The key is one of many elements that tie the two identical protagonists together. You could say it's a key to his soul, or judging by the shadowy nature of this club, the key to his deepest psychological problems. The word chaos in the quotes also suggests a disarrangement, that the scenes presented in the film are not linear. And once you rearrange the events in their correct order, everything should make sense. So how do we make sense of it? Well, let's start with the obvious. Spiders. They and their webs, or symbols of their webs, appear all throughout the film. Webs entrap insects because they can't see the thread. The web itself consists of a repeating pattern, spiraling outwards, and it also represents patterns and all their negative influence on people and society. The dialogue in the film is sparse, which draws greater attention to the little bits of dialogue that do exist. One scene in particular that stands out, partly because it's repeated, is Adam's lecture to the students at university. He says, quoting others, that the greatest world events happen twice, the first time it's a tragedy, and the second time a farce. And this pretty much perfectly encapsulates the ridiculous inevitability of repeating your past mistakes, both on a mass societal level and historical scale, as well as on an individual scale. One could say it's human nature. We're all entrapped in the web. Though it's not explicitly in the film, we all know the quotes those who do not know their past are doomed to repeat it, and Adam arguably does not know his past. I'm just going to put it out there that I think Anthony represents a piece of Adam's past, though he might not be looking at his past correctly. We all look at the past through some sort of filter, though some people's filters are clearer than others. I should have probably built up to this point, but I think it's pretty clear that Adam and Anthony are physical representations of a delicate psyche in the same person. The mother is one of the links, because she's Adam's mother, but she speaks to him as, as if she was speaking to Anthony, referring to his love of blueberries and penchant for infidelity. She also mentions both his stable job, presumably the professorship, as well as his acting career. Anthony's wife also asks who she thinks is Anthony about his teaching. Based on all the external references, I think it's clear they're the same person, but the film goes even further. According to this IMDb trivia, when Adam goes to the hotel to meet with Anthony, there's an L missing in the word satellite in this sign, which was apparently deliberate to show that they're one person. I know, I'm like, that's the most subtle way to show something ever. Also, there's a scar scene, where it's suggested that Adam has the same scar as Anthony, though he doesn't want to show it. This is kind of interesting because a scar could be a reminder of a past accident or a mistake, perhaps the car accident? Anthony is eager to show Adam the scar, as if the past is trying to teach the present a lesson. Hindsight is supposed to be 2020, but Adam doesn't want to reveal his scar. It's as if he's in denial about his past transgressions. I made a mistake here. Probably the affair. It's at this point that he freaks out and runs away. Well, denial is the perfect recipe for repeating your mistakes. If you don't admit that you've made a mistake, you might fall into it again, like insects sticking to a spider's web. The denial could be so strong that he doesn't even recognize aspects of himself, thereby externalizing it as the archetypal evil doppelganger. He sees himself being with another woman as something that's not even happening to him. He sees himself as an entirely different person. 
It's a very clever way to represent the expression leading a double life. One could watch this along David Lynch's Lost Highway for the scene of traumatic fusion between the two sides of a personality, whether it's on the chair in Lost Highway or represented with a car crash. Talk about the truth hitting you hard. It's like the blackboard says, thesis plus antithesis equals synthesis. Adam, or Anthony, presumably repeats his mistake absurdly a second time, and in doing so, it looks like he achieves some sort of mental closure. His expression seems peaceful, but then there's the spider. What's going on? Probably what happened was that this guy is with his wife, he feels trapped because she's pregnant and whatever other reasons, then he gets a key to go to this club where he picks up a girl. It doesn't even have to be a real physical club, it could be something like the key to Pandora's box. He gets the idea that maybe he could be unfaithful. Looks like both his wife and his mother eventually found out. There's a scene of sexual reconciliation between Adam and the wife at the end of the film. Adam is crying, it's emotional. Probably she's forgiving him for the cheating. Although it's at the end of the film, it's only the middle of the story. At some point prior, the girl has found out he's married and conveniently leaves, or there's a convenient actual or metaphorical car crash that helps sweep the affair under the rug. The car crash is probably what gives him the actual or metaphorical scar. Towards the end of the film, the viewer has many questions. It's a mess of a situation and we wonder how things will turn out. The car crash very conveniently ties up all the loose ends, which is probably exactly how Adam felt. He totally got away with it, so he decides to open up Pandora's box again. So I posit that the end of the film really represents the middle of the story. The moral being, we'll keep repeating our mistakes until we've dealt with past demons. And that's kind of what Anthony is, a past demon. The antithesis to Adam's thesis. Him having an affair for the second time is either not shown in the film or shown representationally through the clever switching of identities between Adam and Anthony. Which leads us to the very beginning of the film, which is actually the end of the story. Adam is alone looking dejected and his mother leaves a voicemail saying she's worried about him and also mentions his new apartment. So his wife kicked him out of their apartment. And their marriage is probably over, hence no ring. So before I forget, what do the spiders mean? Spiders, webs, entrapment. Some believe that the spiders represent women, especially pregnant women or other indicators of commitment, the web of marriage. It's a valid interpretation, but I've been playing around with another one. Mundanity and the status quo. See, it kind of depends on how you read Adam's facial expressions at the very last shot, and Jake Gyllenhaal deliberately doesn't give you much to work with. To me, he definitely doesn't look scared of the giant beast. He looks a little resentful, then he sighs as if he's bored, or had enough. I've been seeing the last scene as a cute little domestic dispute. He tells his wife he's going to go out tonight, she says no, gets totally pissed off, and he sighs, defeated. Maybe it's not women who are the spiders, but boredom. Our lives are ruled by unconscious behavioral patterns, routines. They entrap us in a web of habits, dooming us to repeat the same behavior over and over again, our lives becoming as predictable as a streetcar route. Maybe this is why the woman at the club kills the spider, Adam thinks that by going to the sex club, he's escaping from the mundanity of his life. But it's as hollow as the entertainment Adam talks about in his lectures, the entertainment that dictatorships use to distract us. Instead of making real change and progress by breaking his patterns, or even just analyzing his life, he escapes through entertainment, which is depicted in an almost cult-like manner. Isn't it ironic how in his teaching, He's really just repeating his words. He can't apply any part of his lesson to his own life. He has repeated the words so many times that he's blind to the lesson. 
Or, if we go with the theory that the beginning of the film is really the end of the story, then maybe he has survived through all this and he's really teaching the students the lesson that he himself learned, that he himself has repeated the same mistake twice. The web of routine envelops the whole city in a haze so that no one can see clearly, a city of people half asleep. But who's weaving the web? It is, of course, oneself. The filmmakers weren't shy about how the city is a metaphor for the mind. You are your worst enemy, and so on. In that sense, the spider weaving the web could be a symbol of the reptilian brain, the part of the human brain that still runs on instinct, trapping our more developed selves in a web of impulses and cycles, much like animals with mating seasons. Only by becoming fully conscious and reckoning with the truth, your past, and your inner demons can you rise above base desires and temptations. Or can you? Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed that video. I had a lot of fun making it, and I hope you got some sort of new perspective from it. I was really nervous doing this video in particular because I know a lot of YouTubers have covered it, including Renegade Cut, I think Chris Stuckman. Yeah, I hope I was able to add like something new to the discussion. So if you've been enjoying the content, I have an update. Film Formula is now available on Patreon, so consider clicking here to pledge your support. I would really, really appreciate it. As always, thank you so much for watching and hope to see you next time.